Yo, so today we got a philosophical topic to talk about. Hello, fellow plot questers, I are the plot quester, and today I will talk to you guys about utilitarianism. And he, uh, this is mainly introduced by this cool little guy, um, philosopher guy named Jeremy Bentham, and he wrote this in the he wrote this book, and in this book, that's where all the stuff is. So here we freaking go. So first of all, we'll talk about what the frick is utilitarianism, and to be sim to be really, really, really simple about it, it's simply maximizing happiness, and that and society the concept that society should maximize happiness now what does jeremy bentham means by this so basically if we have an extreme example if there's one kid there's one kid on the left another and four kids on the right and you are on a train and you have to go either left or right then you then according to utilitarianism you would turn left to kill the one kid to preserve the happiness of the four kids because he thinks that um, the, ha ca the, the amount of happiness can be calculated, and basically, the more people are happy, the more happiness there is, therefore happiness is maximized, and that is what society should do. And utilitarianism is actually, like, really active in current society right now, due to the fact that, well, votes, you know. If the majority likes this one guy, then that one guy will be president. Sounds familiar? It's also known as democracy. And that is simply, again, another utilitarianism government, or way of thinking. Now let's talk about what utilitarianism is kind of based on, which is the fact that they think they can number happiness with people. And if we think about that, then we start to think, huh, can we really number happiness with the amount of people who feel the happiness? Because there's got to be differences in levels of happiness too as well, right? I mean, Aristotle thought in Nicomachean Ethics, he thought that happiness was sexual acts or, or, or money or wine or, or that kind of happiness that you get through these kind of different things. Those kind of happinesses aren't true happiness. The best and the most worthy happiness is friendship with a true friend or or following philosophy and finding the ideals and the secrets of the world and he thought that was true happiness then we start to think oh wait maybe then utilitarianism should 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 like judge all of these cool government i mean judge happiness through uh, the level of happiness or how worthy that happiness is like aristotle said then you start to realize, oh wait, let's say a sportsman kind of guy says the most important happiness for him, the greatest happiness he feels, is after a workout, and he keeps himself helps, healthy, keeps himself fit, and it allows himself to feel a lot of self-satisfaction, and it's really cool for him. However, let's say another guy, a guy like me, I would say the great happ greatest happiness is, one of my greatest happiness is writing, because it allows me to get all my ideas out of my head and have some fun with it. However, these two, both these happinesses seem to have a pretty good amount of worth. However, then which one outweighs the other? There is no such thing as outweighing the other happiness in this situation, because how are you supposed to judge? It literally depends on the person. So to completely wrap it up, utilitarianism is the concept where you maximize happiness depending on the person, according to Jeremy Bentham. And this relies on calculating happiness and the levels of happiness, at which we decided, huh, that's kind of weird. How the frick do you calculate happiness and why is it based on the number of people instead of the levels of happiness that the person can feel? And then we talked about the worthy happinesses and the different kind of happinesses coming from different things and how these can be judged and how these are judged unjudgeable. And now to wrap it up, utilitarianism, I think it simply shows the crystallization of the cold, harsh reality that we live in, this capitalist society that is run by people. And the thing is, selfish people are selfish. They want to self preserve Self-preservation and what did Kant say? Self-preservation and the pursuit of happiness. That's what every human being prioritizes. And due to these two priorities, we are selfish beings. And I'm not saying this in a negative manner, although it can be considered negative, but we are selfish beings. We need to sort of accept that. However, the thing is, you are selfish and you're living in this world, then 
if you're in the small amount of people that needs to be sacrificed in order for utilitarianism to work, then you're going to disagree with it. Then, if you're in the vast majority of people who are happy due to the misery of the or the disagreement to the minority that utilitarianism sacrifices in order for the maximized happiness, then you will agree with utilitarianism. It just depends on how selfish you are, and all of us are selfish to some extent, therefore it doesn't really matter. Basically, utilitarianism, I believe, pretty much represents this cold capitalist society that we live in, and how selfish people are, and it literally just shows what the world is looking like. Because like as Afro mentioned in the earlier part of the video, utilitarianism is everywhere. The basis of democracy is on utilitarianism. Of course, there's noble ideas in democracies, like everyone's ideas need to be heard. However, the minority's ideas will never be heard over the majority's because it's all due to vote. So utilitarianism is a pretty cool uh, way of thinking that I believe really represents the current human society. And I think I just think it's an interesting concept because I don't fully agree with it, but at the same time, I know that I would probably agree with it if, if, if it favors me. Which also made me realize, huh, utilitarianism, it's kind of cool, but it's also very kind of realistic. And also, it's, it's, I guess it is the best way politicians can really do things because... Like, what's the point of helping the minority if the majority is going to completely come and kill you? You got to maximize the happiness of the people so that they'll stay happy with you and let you stay on court. And I think that makes sense. That's logical. And utilitarianism at that kind of standpoint is logical. However, the fact that utilitarianism sacrifices people and also, of course, this is more of an extreme example. Also, it kind of shows utilitarianism kind of like it's it's like a judge it, it judges how much happiness there is and then and then chooses to decide that will produce more happiness however you realize that's a really abstract concept and that's really 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 pretty much impossible to say oh these the happiness of these five people is more than the happiness of this one person because more people no that that doesn't make any sense so like, I think it's a topic that we all need to think about, like, how can we truly measure happiness? Are there worthy happinesses and not worthy happinesses? Then which one is more worthy when it comes to two worthy happinesses, or if we so judge? And if happiness depends on, like, other people and depends on the people and depends on the perspective, then what is the point of utilitarianism? What is the concept or the perspective of happiness that the person that is implementing utilitarianism to society be looking at? Those are questions that we need to know, and these are questions that we need to know as we look at the modern society. And that is utilitarianism. Cool. It's a pretty simple concept that I just wanted to talk about because, like I said, it's interesting. And like always, your plot cluster, Aaron the Plot Cluster, great, great concept slash book. And I would, I would definitely not read this book because it's hella complicated. I would definitely just search up utilitarianism, sort of study through it, understand the concept, and truly think about what the implications may be. Have a great day.